Okay, this is Pandemonium, episode three, The Wolf, Sullivan Rue. And you just got to see that on loop. I love that little video. It uh, it looks like from that video, she goes from like fourth grade to like, I don't know, college grad in a, a year or something like that. But we get to see a little highlight reel. Sorry, Midori. You show up, Midori Kimura is another great world champion cruiser. She shows up in that video a couple of times. Uh, and it's a great partner and great friend, but she's probably in there one too many times getting drilled. We got Sullivan Rue in standby in the waiting room. Uh, if you don't know who she is, she's a foosball phenom. She's a second generation foozer. I've known her since, well, I knew her parents since she, she, before she was um, a consideration and uh, watched her grow up sometimes at a distance, but because uh, I'm away from foosball, she's grown into an incredibly violent a, a brilliant world champion and I'm going to bring her in. I also want to bring her in to discuss something that she wants to drive awareness to. So first let me get, let me get Sullivan in the room and let me um, do this here. Hey, Sully, how are you? I'm going to make yeah, myself, I want to make myself smaller here so we can talk to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it, it, we're the same time zone. You're out in, in Louisiana at the end of your day. And, and you know, the show's incredibly random. So I just, I, I reached out to yesterday and said, Hey, you want to do this tomorrow? And you're like, yeah, I'll come hang out with you. <laughs> so I appreciate that. But look, uh, what I want to do is uh, we want to drive, you want to drive visibility to something and I'm going to pull something up here. So you can kind of talk about it for a minute before we get into the going through foosball and talking about matches. Let me, let's do this right away. So let me bring this up here. Sure. And uh, let me take myself off and let you talk. For me. All right. So basically, this is a link to support not just Bennett, but all people around the world for um, a very rare disease called INAD. My little cousin Bennett has it. Um, so basically, donating to this is going to send money to the INAD Foundation, trying to reach a million dollars to do a clinical trial because the disease is um, uncurable, unfortunately. So as you can see on the picture, that is Bennett and pumpkins for Benny is the website. Cause we also do a 5k for Bennett. Um, our second one will be in October. So it's every year and all the money goes right to the foundation because we need to raise awareness and hopefully find a cure. Um, so yeah, um, he's obviously a very important part to my family and, the disease is super rare. Only about 150 people to 200 people have it in the whole world. So, uh, you know, there's not so much research on it. So it would mean a lot if we could get some donations and raise money to do more research and bring awareness for him. I think it's incredibly sweet. And, uh, and I'm humbled by the opportunity to help present this with you. I went to the website. I looked at it. I, it. I mean, these are things that you're not, you don't have visibility to unless someone close to you is sharing that experience. And 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 um, uh, thank you for um, driving, you know, allowing me to share in this. And I, I'm hopeful that uh, I see someone already scan the the QR mm -hmm. code. So I think uh, I think that's that's lovely. Yeah, it so, is. Thank you. So let's leave that up for a little bit, and I, I want to um, do a side by side with us here. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Sullivan Rue, the wolf. So <laughs> that, that's new. Has anyone ever called you the wolf before? No, no. <laughs> it's brand new. It's brand new. Let me tell you why. Okay, so this is funny. I was doing commentary for a finals match with you in it, and you're Sully Bear, right? Yeah. You're sweet. Yeah. You are. In, there's nothing duplicitous about that. You're genuinely a sweet human being. Your parents are the sweetest people. I mean, your dad is this. There's a sweet. Your mom, completely sweet human beings. And so now I'm doing a finals match with you. And I swear to you, Sully, it was the most violent, hostile foosball thing I've seen. It was like over so damn quick. It was a barrage of, of offense. Like, I don't know if you ever even attempted to block anything. It was over in like seven minutes. And I thought, what? <laughs> it, felt like, it felt like you hadn't eaten in weeks. And oh someone put like a, uh, a like a chicken pot pie in front of you with a with a fork and a knife, and the thing would just vanished. That's how. So I thought this is nothing cute, Sully Bear. But yeah, your Sully is the wolf, and I am naming you Sullivan Rue. You're from now on. You are the wolf, and uh, it is because um, 
And then we're gonna now we're gonna segue into something else that I want to talk about. So I want to talk about the Berlin Bears. I actually want to stop talking and I want to share <laughs> this thing with the Berlin Bears. I want you to talk about the Berlin Bears. What are the Berlin Bears? Talk to me, Sully. All right. So basically, Lily and Vivi from Germany both reached out to me and then to Hannah separately, asking us to be a part of this team. Um, as you know, Tony, you know, he's been a part of this Bundesliga deal i don't i don't really understand it too much but basically they'll make teams so it's kind of like world cup almost but it's not country versus country so these are people from all over the world on a team this i think this is the first time any females from the u.s have gone and competed at this particular event so yeah it's a team of nine or ten girls and I'm super excited about it. They had a tournament in March, and it's a two- or three-day thing. You go through qualifiers, and it's up to the amount of points that you have and the amount of points that were scored on you. And then our next one is the first weekend of June, so I will be going to that, me and Hannah. And there is no tornado, so, you know, it'll be good experience if we do happen to get to play. Uh, it's going to be mostly Leonhardt and Bonzini. And, yeah, and then I think the winner of that qualifies for the championship league, which would be in Rome in November. So that would be amazing. Hopefully, you know, we can uh, pull that off. But I am so excited. I remember, you know, my te- my eyes were full of tears whenever they reached out to me. It's something me and Hannah have wanted to do, but I just, I don't know, I didn't know how to start getting into traveling overseas and stuff. So I think this is the perfect, the perfect way. And it truly is a family. I haven't even spent time with some of the ladies on the team, but we already feel super close. So I'm very excited about it. Where are you going? So you said you're going to Rome if you get to another round, but where are you going next? What country? So we're going to Germany. Wow. Trier, I don't know how to say it, but that's where the tournament's at. So yeah. Super cool, man. It's amazing. Uh, who's on the team that, like, I, th- I think Lily Andres is the team captain, right? Yeah, so there's Vivi and Lily. I, um, they both kind of started the whole deal. So they've been forefront of the, the Bears team. So me and Hannah are new. And then also, I believe, Vesti, uh, Blaga Vesta from yeah. Bulgaria. She's new as well. Uh, there's... Um, Samantha or Sam, which she is in that picture. She's right to the right of the the frame. Uh, there's yeah. Amber, who ha- is a world champion on Land Heart, and she is from the Netherlands, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know where they're all from. I'm just... Okay. Uh, uh, and just pick a country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then there's, there's Kate. Yeah. Kate from Bulgaria. Uh, sure. Okay, there's mm-hmm. Maria. Okay. <laughs> Maria from Germany. You know, okay, there's another country, you know. <laughs> yeah, Wendy. I, I don't know where she's from. Just say Norway. Just just end, yeah. end countries. Yeah, Norway. and then Ellen. Yeah. Ellen. And then, yeah. So. Oh, Amber's okay, from yeah. the Netherlands. Amber's from Netherlands. All okay. right. And, all right. Okay, so who's paying for this, man? Do you pay for your own travel? Or is there a sponsor? How does this work? So we do have a sponsor. I don't know how to pronounce it, a bot or something. It says it right there. Anyways, so we do have that. And I believe Hannah's trying to get another sponsor. So they do cover some of our uniforms. Mm-hmm. And they cover some um, some staying, like where, where we stay and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, obviously, it's more difficult for us from the U.S. just because it is more expensive. So, but we we are blessed to have some accommodations covered. Well, so look, it's been very gracious of you to. Dri- I mean, this is lovely. You're driving aware- awareness, and let me put that up again because I want to put that up. Um, where is it? Here, might let's put this up again so people know why so, Sully is, wants to drive visibility to her cousin Bennett, who has a rare genetic uh, disease. And um, but the next next time we do this, maybe we could bet, put Bennett up, and then we could put up um, funds to go to Rome or wherever the heck you're going. Oh next. yeah, so, I uh, next time, we'll, time. We'll, you, you're, you're not you're not thinking of yourself, and I think that's lovely. But the next time we put this up, maybe we'll we'll do another one of these. Um, well, that's awesome, Berlin Bears. If you look in the upper left corner here, the Berlin Bears. That's the link to their Facebook page. 
that is like super. I mean, when I was a kid playing foosball, that is unfathomable to imagine being part of a team that travels to other countries to compete in other foosball tables. That is a, mm -hmm. um, I mean, wow, man. Did you, did you ever think that you'd be arriving there when you started playing foosball when you were two and a half in your diaper? I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, even when I got the text, I was just like so yeah. shocked. I just didn't think it was ever like a consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, oh my God, that's crazy. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, so look, one of the things we want to talk about when we do this is uh, a deliverable that focuses on foosball as a backdrop. And I love to get in, like, my thing is the psychology, getting into players' heads. Um, let me take this off for now. I'm going to load a match here. And because um, I want to also be respectful of your time. Let me put this up. Ask Sullivan who our favorite fat ball cousin is. I believe that. I think uh, that would be Dale. <laughs> is that is that is that Dale? That your cousin in there, Sam? Oh, Sam there's Rue. Sam Rue. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know who that was. I kept seeing the the name, and I was like, I don't wonder who that is. Well, okay. So uh, there might be people that there's probably plenty of people here that know who you aren't familiar with you. There'll be people that watch this that are on Twitch that don't know that foosball is a hardcore professional sport that people invest lots of time in and uh and they also may not know that you're one of foosball's already one of foosball's greatest champions and an up and coming um up and coming talent that could rewrite record books and before i start i'm going to play a match in a minute and you know I, I could probably let it just play in the background now let me turn the volume down a little bit why don't we um let this play in the background. I mean, it's, it's the table. It's table three on Sunday night. Um, you want to talk a little bit about like your how you got started in football, and you want to talk about that? like I don't know, when you first started swinging a, a rod when you were in a diaper. I don't know if you ever if it built up to a place where like yeah, I'm going to compete. Why don't you talk about that just a little bit? Sure. Um, obviously, like you were saying, I I was playing in a diaper. Obviously, not competing, mm -hmm. but always standing on a chair, uh, Christina Fuchs always coming up, Terry Moore always coming, playing with me. Uh, obviously, my parents taught me everything. So, yeah, obviously, I, I mean, I didn't even understand the game at that time. And mm -hmm. then when I was around six, I joined – I mean, I started playing the juniors. And I did play my first tournament at five or six, I believe, on a warrior table. Wow, yeah. And I got probably third in singles. I'm sure I wasn't too happy about it, but <laughs> I don't know really what I was expecting. And from then on out at every tournament, I would play junior. I'd play beginners. And honestly, I'd play everything because I just remember never sitting down one time. I was always playing. And uh, there was a nationals when I was 12 or 13. And I didn't have a women's partner. I typically didn't have a women's partner. And we beat a master team and I was a beginner or rookie, which rank doesn't really necessarily define skill in some cases. So I was, well, who's was the master? Who was the master? I don't want to, I don't want to no, come on. Okay. Was it okay. me? No, <laughs> it, was, was it? it was in women's. It was in women's. Oh, okay. Was Cindy? No, it was uh, Stacy and Shelly. Oh, wow, man. And wow. That's like, awesome. All. Yeah. I mean, of course, I was so excited because they are just an amazing team. So I'm not trying yeah. to, you know, throw them out oh, there like stop that. it. But that was just a huge deal. And that's when I realized, you know, I could really do well in this. Mm -hmm. And that's just my first memory of that. And obviously, I, I did well in juniors. I, I won a lot of junior titles. Me and Logan Hearn played a lot together. And I began to win more juniors. So then I decided to move up from that and not move up from it, but add on events to that. And then there was a few years before I, I really started winning women's events. I was always getting second and third, second and third. And I knew that I had skill to do it, but I just, it just wasn't happening. And I was getting super upset and super frustrated. And I felt like I should be winning and I'm not. So at that point I knew I could, start winning but I knew that maybe I wasn't as much of a threat at that point because I wasn't using my brain at all mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean I was just going off of skill I think 
I, I mean, also, I was immature, more immature and less experienced in that field of competing. So then finally, something clicked in my head. And, of course, all the practice that I did, I mean, I wanted it, that's for sure. I wanted it really bad because I practiced nonstop. I did so many reps, so many everything. So I was prepared in that way. And then once my brain clicked in, then it kind of all connected. And then now we're here. You know, it's not shocking about that at all. And this may surprise you, but I think there's a massive cluster of foozers where the brain never clicks in. It just, I mean, it maybe may they're happy in that kind of blissful place. It's like, look, I just swing the rods and uh, mm-hmm. I take a fifth every now and then. And I'm talking about, we talk about a normal curve. There's a small percentage of champions and there's all these people here in this curve that, um, you know, get close, but never do it. Uh, and I think there's a, I think I'm being a little self-reflective. I mean, it's fun to just play yeah. fast and swing the rods and do whatever you feel like doing. And let's just do a slingshot now. Cause it feels good. All that stuff. But I think uh, when you talk, you talk about evolving to a space where you start using your brain, can you dig into a little bit more? Like when you say you, did you start internalizing, thinking about the game, thinking about the game during the match on what's actually happening on the table? Talk about that. Yeah. So I am still working on that because it is more difficult for me. Like I said, I did use most just mostly just skill for a while. Even mm-hmm. recently, even still, I just get caught up in that, especially because me and my dad play every day and we play for real. We play seriously, but it's, it's not life or death. <laughs> not that any <laughs> match is life or death. <laughs> but, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you sure he's not at risk of you watching him sleep at night and be like, you know what? Yeah, you beat yeah, me actually, one too many times, dad. Oh, oh, that happens. I get mad. <laughs> it's annoying. Anyways, <laughs> but, but now people have caught on to certain things I'm doing. And so, I can't just use the baseline of skill that I created for myself. I have to think of newer things to do, new wrinkles in every Mm -hmm. aspect of my game. And then after I developed all of these things, I mean, I've gotten so many different passes on my five bar that it's almost like I don't even know which one to do. I'm just doing them because I I have so many different options. Yeah. And then one day... In World Cup, Christina Fuchs came up to me and was like, you're using, like, you have so many options, but you don't need to use them all right now. Yeah. Go back to your basic three and yeah. use your head and really read and go from there. And that is actually some of the best advice I've gotten in a while. And it, and she put it in a way that was easy for me to understand. And that has helped a lot. Because, yeah, I can still use those options, but I don't. I don't need to use them first ball. Like I need to use that maybe to trick them or get them off of their their normal defense, you know? This is a special thing about foosball. It's very, very, it's very, very enlightening what you're talking about because the evolution of a fooser in my experience is, um, you know, you start playing and there's this massive learning curve and you learn all these things. You could do all these things. And then, so you do them, right? You're a rookie or a beginner. You're like, I can do all this stuff. And I could do, I could do it, and I'm just going to do it. I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just going to happen. And then you start, um, you know, formulating a plan and something organized, and then uh, you start playing broader and broader groups of people. And people that play you start to figure you out, right? You, your competitive circle or outside, and then you got to adjust. And then it's like, okay, I need a couple things that look the same that are options. And and then you go through these cycles where it's kind of like I got to make it. I got to. It's too complicated. Like I, I don't need to be thinking about seven things on this. Um, possession i need to think about one and maybe the alternative what do i do really well and what's the other are they thinking about that thing and then a strange thing happens as you like start playing people with regularity which you're going to get incredibly exposed to this especially going overseas you guys are just you get a if you get like a um like 20 people man that are just like in this uh um this incubator and they're all like learning and growing and developing off each other they're all like building off each other that's when incredible growth happens. And so I'm excited that, uh, well, you wouldn't be a champion unless you learn to narrow that stuff down and, and and focus it in. I think I want to talk about what's happening right now. This is pretty cool, right? So what's happening right now is your match has been called up. You got a finals match in women's doubles. It's you and Midori. You're in the winner's bracket and you're going to play some absolute monsters from Europe, right? You're going to play 
um, Lynn Tran and, and Ekaterina Kathy, mm -hmm. who is the, she's the number one player from uh, Romania. Uh, yes. She was the number one women's player and goalie. And um, Lynn, who's just like, is a, pro, a full time professional foosball athlete. The last time I saw you play, play Kathy, you and Hannah were losing to her and Anna at the World Cup in the yes. gold medal round of women's doubles. So you guys have history. Now you're on your table, Tornado. Talk about like right now, you guys are getting to the table. Is that your mom talking to Midori? Yep. Okay. You guys are at the table. What's happening right now? Talk to me. So um, they're, they're not there yet. So I'm trying both sides. I was shooting a little bit out the back just because you never know. See, Midori's up front, even though mm -hmm. I'm going to start playing up front. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, I'm feeling nervous, but in that moment, I wasn't terribly nervous just because we were going in very confident, not cocky, but confident, which is good. You should go in that way. Yeah. But there always are a little nerves for me going in, which I think that keeps it interesting. So, yeah, um, you're going to see me. I don't know if I'm jumping right now, but <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but I always yeah. am jumping up and down. It helps to wake me up because, first of all, it was cold in there. Um, second of all, like I was saying, I am a little nervous and I feel like moving around, jumping up and down helps yeah. me out a lot. Yeah. And yeah. me and Midori even had this joke, like we'll run laps. We'll just go run around the room and come back. <laughs> what surprised me? Nothing would surprise me if you guys did that. Hold yeah, me. you're right. Just, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, we, we get that all out. And this time Midori wasn't showing so much nerves, but she wasn't, um, as nervous as she typically is, which we were joking about because usually it's the other way around where Midori is pretty nervous and I'm nervous, but not, not as much. And she was really a firm ground for me. So it's kind of, it's funny because we know we're both nervous, but we're trying not to show it for each other. If that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, so we'll be like, so are you nervous? And she's like, no, nah, I'm fine. And she's like, you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like sweet. About to, like throw yeah. up. <laughs> I'm so nervous. So it's pretty funny, but now, yeah, we're just hitting the ball around. Also, I really like to go up to the table before and just hit it. You know, sometimes when I'm warming up, I just do dumb stuff that I'm not going to do in a match. And yeah. I don't know. I think that is, it's helpful. Like, I don't know. I think I just, see, I'm just tic tacking around, whatever. Yeah, anyway, I loose. think that's helpful, you know, yeah, staying loose, hitting it, just hit it as hard as you can. Just that it helps me get out the nerves just whacking it everywhere, go test out both sides. You need to do tic tacs, just hit it all over the place on both sides because it's important to catch loose balls. And one side, you know, it, it, you may feel more smooth and you may feel more of a flow with the yeah. speed of, of everything. And yeah, like I said, it really helps me out to just go and hit, hit it around and tic tac and do random stuff. Yeah, you shot a five bar because yeah, you're see, like, clever. <laughs> wow, look at you. You're getting loose. So, okay, here's my question. And I guess Lynn shows up to the table now. Mm -hmm. So, it's a, this is table three. There's no commentary. Apologies to everybody. The camera's kind of off angle a little bit, but it just changed the dynamic. If this table, if this match was on table seven and you didn't know, like right now, you have no idea if there's 20 people watching or 300 people watching on Inside Foods. I, do you feel more of the anxiety because of the, the visibility, whatever the crowd or the camera? How's that affecting your? Um, um, or is it invisible? Is it something like I'm used to? It. I've done this a thousand times. Yeah, no. I think also coming from World Cup, like once mm -hmm. I went to World Cup for the first time and competed in the pits, it kind of changed yeah. my outlook and, and how I felt about everything. I do still get nervous, but I'm just nervous for the match. I'm not nervous for the crowd or the cameras or anything. I actually like when it's recorded just so I can go back and watch. Yeah. But – no, I think I, I like it honestly. Even yeah. if they're not cheering for anyone, I like. I think it's cool to have okay, a so crowd. Okay, so Lynn's wrapping up now. You guys are getting wrapped up. What do you like in your brain? You know, you're going to play Lynn and Kathy. Let's talk about what's happening. What's what's cycling through? Are you thinking about specifics? Um, her five bar, her three bar, like clearing. What's what's going on? Uh. Yeah, I'm really not thinking much about anything. Usually when I'm rapping, I'm just looking down, uh, kind of hyping myself up almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, not really talking too much. If 
I, I don't really go out of my way to talk to other people. Oh, now Mark Kraus is giving me two mints. Okay. So that's kind of like a thing that we do. Yeah. I'm not superstitious, but he just always, before a huge match of mine, he gives me he gives me his little mints. So I take one and it, it lightens the mood. I think two, two minutes. I think you said two minutes. He gives you two mints. No, no, no. Two mints. Okay. Yeah. Like, 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 uh, like Altoids or we're talking about like, um, yeah, like icebreakers. And oh, yeah, okay. that's been, that's been a thing and it is helpful. You know, it's good to stay focused and in the and like tunnel yeah. vision, which I typically am not wanting to talk too much besides my partner. And it's nice to, kind of break out of that for a second and he he'll make me laugh and i don't know if he, i think he does it on purpose he's it, it's cool it, it's helpful yeah you have so, a quick yeah. question and can you see this question in chat let's ask let's uh yeah. answer the chat question if you yeah. if you can see it yeah so yeah i am going to have to play bonzini let i mean assuming that i do get put in because not all the teammates will be able to play uh yes of course i am preparing for it as Bonzini is not my home table and it's the farthest from it. But yeah, I'm preparing. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Okay. So we're getting, um, we're getting rolling here and you have, like I said, you have history with these other athletes on the other side. You played them in the world cup multiple times. And uh, I think the last time you played them, they beat you, right? They beat you in the world uh, team final and in the goal and the, um, the, the doubles final, Kathy beat you and Lynn beat you in the gold medal round are you feeling any of that are you feel, or is that like not in your is that not in your is that not circulating anywhere in your brain are you talk about that um okay well first i actually never played lynn one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. so i think that was good i mean obviously i know she's amazing but i can't let that get into my head if that makes sense like yeah. I can't be scared of you can't be scared of who you're playing. I think a good like a lesson that I learned from my dad, especially from Tony, like he'll say going in he used to play a certain way because it was Tony and he'd actually play worse. And now he's not scared and he'll go in play play your game. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. who you're playing against. Don't let that get in your head. Yeah. So I really use that here because obviously she's the World Cup champion in singles. And yeah. her team won. And then, of course, Kate, doubles champion. Yeah. And obvious, uh, she's been winning a lot of different multi-table events. But you really have to, I mean, at least I have to really use the confidence that I have in myself. Like, you've been here before. You know what you're doing. Be confident. And I don't want to sound cocky about it, but, you know, just... Yeah. Beat them. It doesn't matter. Like keep your head down and do your thing. Don't focus on anything else. I see you fighting on the five bar and, and Lynn is she has a reputation for her five bar. Like she's done tens of thousands of reps on every single pass. Mm -hmm. Um she, uh, admittedly she worked on her five bar I don't know. So she she described some exponential number of hours she put in her five bar so much that she'd have all these possessions she didn't know how to score <laughs> so she had to work she had to work on her three bar what is your uh, is your experience similar were you were you more three bar more five bar because you seem like you have a t your offense is ridiculous when you get on a roll were you more three bar or five bar or pretty pretty equal uh well at first i did practice more five bar like when i first started and i did the same as lynn i mean so many reps on my five bar as a lot of people saw in that foosballers is moving every day just so many until it's just not even a thought for me like i don't want to have to worry about can i execute it i just want to worry about can i read the defense and pick the right thing so i think that my shot is i mean it's good enough and if i can keep getting it even if i'm getting blocked if i can keep getting it that's all that matters because eventually you're going to score or you'll figure something out. So the more opportunities you have to look at the defense, the more likely you are to figure it out and score on it. So that's, I mean, I think my five more may be better than my three. I don't know, but yeah. I think it's, I think that's fine. I think it's some equivalency from what my, what I see, there's some, some equivalency. You've definitely done the um, repetitions on your five bar to have unconscious confidence when you want like your, and I think you have the second look 
I think you have that like um, peripheral second, second look where the first pass gets blocked, you know, the second option within a, a nanosecond. And so you get mm -hmm. that second pass, which mm -hmm. is um, super cool. But so here we go. We're, we're two to one. It looks like you're not having a problem scoring so far. Is, are things in your mind going smoothly at this point? Yeah. Right now, I mean, in, against anyone, I don't want them to get this point. I mean, you don't want anyone to get any points, but it's an important one. A 3-1 lead it's a big, I don't know, I think it's a turning point rather than 2-2. Two, two. Now they can steal it and they can get three and then I'm down. Yeah. You know? Right. So I think that was important to try to get that away from her. I'm going to answer um, the question from Never Now about why Wolf. Uh, she, Sullivan is the wolf because her – because when she's real sweet and adorable, she's Sully Bear. But when she's on a foosball table, she's like a ravenous predator. And uh, I think the onslaught of offense is can be obscene sometimes when you just attack. It's what's terrifying, especially in singles, is when you pass and score in a second, and then um, the ball gets to your two bar, and you shoot a push on goal, and it's just like an on everything's just going heading toward the other way. Have you ever seen her win a, a open? Oh, sorry, a women's singles final in like 12 minutes or less you, you understand where the wolf comes from uh there's a question here can you see this question from more Taz on the screen or do i need to um can you see it yeah i can see it um okay it depends who i'm playing um when i go into a match i'll see how much i can get away with uh not how much i can get away with but i'm not deeply thinking of what are they doing with their defense i'm just passing with what what is what I see in the moment and that works a lot of the times but for someone who's studied me and has a plan I can tell I can tell right away if they're more educated and like have an idea of what to block on my five bar and then I'll think I'll think more about it and maybe even think of a pattern that I can do and get them off of what I want or if, if that makes sense. I don't know if that made sense. You keep getting, you keep getting questions, which is great. Yeah. I'm reading them. Okay. Uh, what was your game plan on the three after Kati seemed to have been racing you at the world cup final? Um, my game plan was just to see, you know, I, I don't know what her defense would be on tornado just on just tornado. I think I shot pretty well on her at World Cup. I mean, well enough. She did block me, but I shot well enough to have won the match if it would have went our way. So I wasn't terribly worried. Um, I, I like to go in with an open mind and not really think of, oh, this person blocked me so well and I'm worried to, to shoot on them. I was just going to see what she was giving me and then go from there if it wasn't working out, uh, figure something else out. Okay, let's see. Another question. <laughs> Keep answering. That's great. Good. On your push shot, are you trying to get the ball to feel like a back pin shot, or is it more about how the opponent is defending? Like a back pin shot? I don't understand. Do you know what he's trying to say? I think he's trying to say, um, let me see, on your push shot, are you trying to get the ball to feel like a – so you're trying to get it back into a pin position where the ball is basically squibbed out, or is it more about how the – like a bit – or about how the opponent is – Shot or it's more about how the opponent's are you, are you trying to put the ball to feel like a back pin? A back pin shot. You know, I'm actually not uh, maybe okay. I guess I got it right. Um, um, I mean, I don't ever shoot it from a pin. I do more I mean I I don't know. Maybe it seems like a back pin because I do do a lot of quick shooting. Maybe it could seem like that, but no, I it does depend on how they're defending. I'll set it up and kind of see what they're immediately giving me and go from there. I think that's Kathy. Hey, Kathy. I think I'm pretty sure. I'm almost certain. Ariel Souls is Kathy. Let's see. Did the tables and ball make a difference for you? Because at the World Cup, they have a different model and ball. I felt like a shooting was different than at the World Cup. Yeah, it definitely was. Um I think it's kind of known that, like, all of the tables – I mean, I don't know about other tables, but, like, Tornado, it's typically a little different 
thin. <laughs> yeah, I'm spying, of course, she says. <laughs> nice job with your anonymous phone call. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. No, um, so yeah, the tables did feel different. I did adjust to them, but maybe my shot is a little slower at World Cup than the typical tables on the U.S. tour. And I do think that the balls are different. It's a lot slower. And I think they're even – someone recognize that they're a different size or something like crazy but I don't take I don't use that as an excuse as to why I lost I think that y'all beat us I, I'm not uh I think that at least in my opinion it didn't affect me enough to where I should where I could use that as an excuse to losing any of my matches if that makes sense but for other people it may have been a factor as to why they lose a few balls or they lose a match because it may affect them a lot more. But there definitely is a difference that I felt. You know, uh, I want you to get to these other questions for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I will tell you that that World Cup match, you know, everybody played amazing. And, you know, who played amazing too was Anna on mm -hmm. her three bar. Like every single trick shot, off speed, angle thing was going for her, man. She was playing lights out offense on the three bar. Anna Bobby, who was uh, Kathy's partner. Kathy, Kathy had some clutch blocks. So, um, Kathy, I, I'm going to get you back. Please join me at some point later. I'm going to get you and maybe Anna both will go over that match. I'd love to analyze that match. Um, but I don't want to take away any further from the, the questions here. Uh, I think you, you answered Never Mall's question about the ball does go. I think you do shoot it out of the um, – I think the ball – you can generate enough power. I think it's in a pin shot uh, when you shoot it. So it's behind the, man, the ball, the dots. But uh, yeah. how about this other question? Do you have mantras or something similar for situations? You see that question? The dots are coming. Um, let me see. Let me see. Do you have mantras or something similar for situations where concerns or doubts are coming up in your head? Uh, as in like a backup plan or like something I tell myself to figure it out. Like our know? Father who art in heaven, hallowed be that. <laughs> like like a prayer. <laughs> I mean, of course, I'll say a prayer before the match starts. <laughs> if I really, really can't figure something out then i'll probably take a time out and be like come on like let's get it together what are you doing stop doing that like i kind of bust it myself in my head or hit myself in the face i've done that before um i mean yeah i, I don't i don't do too much but if i am having doubts and it is getting to be a lot um, it will affect my game and maybe sometimes I don't notice that and then looking back like let's say I lose a game in, in the match and I'm saying why wasn't I catching my passes that's not something that should be happening then I can think of oh I was letting my nerves get to me I was letting them get into my head just do your thing so then from there I'll get on the table before the next game starts and just nail a few passes and my confidence will come back and I can kind of figure it out from there. We're going to pause this match for a second because sure. um, I, I want to keep talking to the chat. It's awesome. But I also want to reflect on this. I believe you guys was tight the first game and then you guys got blown out yeah. like five to two. Yeah. And now it's the second game and it's four to two right now. They are just playing more consistent. They're getting yeah. more blocks. Lynn's five bar steady. She's scoring. I think she's scoring. I, Sorry, I've been a little distracted. I feel like she's scoring at a yeah. high percentage. It seems yeah, like stuff right. is working. Is that what's happening right now? Yeah, so also Kate scored like three or four, I think, in that – maybe not in that game, but in the oh. match together, oh, like in the first set. Yeah, She wow. had scored several, which – From a pin? Was it, was it from a pin, like yeah. a toe? Okay. Yeah, I think she, she shot a push shot as well for one of them. But anyway, that's something like we should – it, like, let's say we would have blocked it, then it would have changed the game. So she definitely helped out a lot in the beatdown we got in the first set. <laughs> well, so look, um, timeout. Lynn has it on her three bar. I think you and Midori just switched. Did you go to goalie? And Midori yeah, went we, to did, we did switch. Yeah. Okay. Why? Talk to – they called the timeout. Mm -hmm. You guys are – her hands are already on the rods. Like, you guys aren't even talking about anything. I know you guys don't give up. But where was your heads right now during this time? I was four to two, second game. You lost the first game. What's happening? Yeah, so I was feeling I was feeling kind of upset with myself and it wasn't looking good. 
uh, I never think negatively, but it's kind of like, okay, if this goes to a second set, it can't be like this or we will get frustrated. And that's, that's the truth of it. So I was kind of accepting that in my head, like this will happen if I don't figure something out. If we don't figure something out as a team, then it's over. And that's just that. Um, Cause they were playing too good and we weren't, we weren't, we weren't competing. Um, so yes, I know we could have come back at this point. That's, I think that's why we switched to do something different. Maybe I can block, um, either give her a pass or clear it out. And Midori can try to get a shot on goal okay. and maybe turn the game around. Okay. And yeah, that's basically what we were doing here. Trying anything different. And that's, I think it was a good idea. Like it obviously didn't work this game, but it was it shows are something different. No, I, I have a strong appreciation for that. You know, having played in plenty of my own foosball matches, but observed way more than I played in, what happens, people start looping and they start getting into a circular rut and they can't even mm-hmm. deviate their mind. And they do that till they lose. And then they yeah. go home and they've lost. They think about it later. I, like if you would have done anything different, like shot a five bar shot, anything, just like try different passing series. So look at the straight. But people loop. And so I appreciate you just saying, hey, there's an intervention here. Let's do something, anything different. And so you're t- attempting that now. Um, so Kathy, I, I, I wasn't watching because I was paying attention to the chat, but it looks like Kathy is just uh, unstoppable at this point, right? She's not letting you guys breathe at all. Yeah. And see, I did manage to clear that one. So it was something different, at yeah. least. Um, yeah. Midori wants, so. so Midori calls a timeout. I'm assuming she's, you guys are going to switch here. She wants to switch here. Yeah. So that timeout. was another good call. Like, I wasn't blocking the five bar at all. I don't know yeah. if I blocked any in that first set, to be honest. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't. So, yeah, Midori caught one, gave her a different defense. Uh, I think also with switching, if you're not, like, let's say I'm playing a team and they switch, I'll always make sure to tell my partner they just switched. Because you may not even – you may notice, but you may not make that adjustment in your head that I'm not going to go and do this quick pass because they're going to leave this open. It's not the same person blocking, if that makes sense. Like, you can yeah, set something yeah. up in it, you know. So it's important to notice that, that they switched. That's just another tip that I've learned. Okay, well, I hit the wall there, so good job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. It, it's, it doesn't all – it's not always clicking – or, you know, it, it's rarely always clicking. It's beautiful yeah. when it is. Everything's working. But um, that's part of the – and that's it. So what happened? Did she scored it. She scored it, didn't she? I think she did score it. Wow. Yeah, um, another one. Another one. <laughs> are you still there, Kathy? Did you score that one? Because if I rewind it, it's going to go back way too far. All right. Okay, this is, this is critical. It's a critical moment. Oh, yeah. Because you're between matches, right? You just lost the first match. You're in the winner's bracket. Now it's evened up. It's one more match left. <laughs> Look at yeah, she yeah, she did. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, she did. <laughs> All right. So okay, what's happening between you and you and um Midori or what? Doing what? Okay, right so I won't lie, I was feeling I wasn't feeling good. Mm-hmm. But luckily I had a similar situation with this at Worlds, mm-hmm. uh Tornado Worlds, where me and Hannah got blown out of the water the first set. And really, by who? By who, by the way? I don't remember. By Deliza and Yvetta. Okay. And really just had like, oh God, I was, I, it, it's almost like I accepted that we were going to lose at that point, which is terrible. But whenever I, I don't know, I'm not used to, I'm not used to that. I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but like having the winner side, I was so confident that I, uh, and I was so confident in my game and in Hannah's game that. I didn't expect to be destroyed like that. So then I'm thinking, okay, what what on earth are we going to do? So we go walk off and figure out a plan. We ended up figuring out in the second set. So luckily I had that experience for this moment because I went and sat in front of my mom. And my mom obviously always helps me and coaches me. But she's also like a comfort person for me. So I kneel down, I have tears in my eyes, trying not to cry, which absolute cannot cry. It's not over. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And she's just saying to me, get it together, put your emotions aside, which I did and needed to do, put your emotions aside and 
be yourself and play yourself and play aggressive and be confident. Because when I'm confident, my game is completely different. I'm, I'm catching more stuff. I'm more confident that I'm going to score and I'm going to pass and it's going to happen. Like, we're going to win. So I had to click out of that emotional moment that I had. And then me and Midori take a walk. We take a walk away. Midori, like I, like I was saying earlier and joking about how she always gets so nervous, she was a rock in that moment, and she was confident. She was so confident that we were going to figure it out. So that was an important moment, and that was great of her, like a great partner thing. So we go off and talk, and we have some advice given to us. You know, we have a little meeting between me and her. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my dad comes and tries to hype me up and just like, come on, like, act like we're back at home playing. And so we get together. I get my emotions in check. And now I'm confident, and I'm going back to the table, and I'm back in my tunnel vision like I was before the match started. And – um, you know, if you're having the king C and you get beat the first set, you need to walk away and pretend like this yeah. is not anything. Like this is a new match, and yeah. that's what I went in as. That I didn't get just get beaten. Like, you know, I'll pretend like this is just some match, and we're starting new. So flip the coin, take your wraps off, and rewrap. Even if you're on the same side, just something else. So that's how I went into this. I. I don't know if I did it yet or if we missed it, but I definitely went up and hit some passes on this table. Is it right I don't know. Right, I think. Yeah, That's see, fine. I'm I'm focused. I'm not talking to anyone after I just talked to Midori and getting it together. So I think uh, there's a debate about that. I, I'm whenever if I'm in the kink seat match, if I'm in the kink seat and I lose my first match, I don't know what the actual rules are, but I take off. Like I take yeah, off. You have absolutely. to find. You actually you have to find me. I will like I'll go on recall. I don't care. I leave for an hour. I'm not even mm -hmm. not even kidding. Last time it was a pro doubles final, um, and I, I, we were in the king seat. Lost the first match. I bolted. It, it was in Vegas, and I did the um, bungee jumping at the cir circus circus. I went bungee jumping, and I don't know if they were going to forfeit. They finally found me, and I came back because I want to reset myself entirely. I wanted to be entirely reset. So I completely appreciate and respect that idea. It's like you know, I think. Some people are better than I mean, some people are just way better than me, period. They could lose the first match and then start the second match immediately. And they're like, they're already ready to go. For me, I, if I start the second match the way I played the last match, it just continues. I just, mm -hmm. I'm the same train. I'm not that good. Uh, I've seen other players just don't care. And they're just like, great no matter what. Um, we got some other questions here. Yeah. I'm going to take a look. So let's see. I'll go down a bit because. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, talking about my mom's defense at World Cup. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she was a solid rock for our team in the World Cup final. I don't know if you watched that. Oh, yeah. I, I did the um, – Oh, I yeah, of course. Commentary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, she did. Amazing. Okay, let's see. You blocked in, scored, good switch. So, yeah, luckily that was a good switch. Okay. Um, <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at the anonymous – <laughs> cool, um, question from the uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's no secrets here. Go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's okay. get this what do you think you focus on coming back? Okay. Uh, obviously, I think a lot of times when I lose confidence, that's a big reason that stuff maybe didn't work out, or I just did dumb stuff because I'm in my head and I'm playing nervously. It's good to have nerves, but you have to use them to your advantage which I didn't do that first set at all. And so, yeah, coming back, like I said, how I had to, like, click off my emotional side, that was a major thing that I had to do for the match. It's get my emotions in check and just kind of be like a, a machine and a robot. And that's, I mean, that may sound weird, but, like, that's what I feel like when I'm clicking into my my game. It's like, you know, just destroy. Like, <laughs> that's what I have to think. And then obviously, uh, you scored a lot. I'm, I'm talking about our anonymous commentary. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, scored no, a she, lot. And I'm I, and I adore her. She <laughs> asks all the questions you want. It's the interaction yeah. that makes drives us things. So please keep asking yeah. questions. But go so, ahead. So, yeah, she so. scored a lot. And that was yeah. another major thing. Like, we can't be having Lynn scoring so well and the goalie scoring so well out the back. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to happen. Even yeah. if I'm scoring really well, it's not. 
So we need to figure out that. So that's another thing. And then I need to get some blocks on the five bar because I'm not helping out Midori at all. And it's not Midori's fault she can't block Lynn. Lynn is Lynn. So she's yeah. going to score. She's going to. And I'm not helping Midori out at all by not blocking her five bar at all. So I need to change. I need to change something different. And then as for shooting, I sh- I did score, but not in a high enough percentage to change the game at all. So I need to really sit and analyze. I think we were talking about that earlier on in this, that I go off a of skill a lot of times. And I do it until I can't do it. And I couldn't do it in that moment because she's too much of a smart player. And I can't just shoot blindly. Not that I was completely shooting blindly, but I wasn't using my brain completely as I should mm-hmm. have. Mm-hmm. So I really had to, um, I don't know the word, like tame myself and really as much as it is hard for me to sit and like really analyze and think, cause I'm not that type of player where I don't know. So that's another thing I go in thinking like, I cannot rush. I can't like, it just, it just isn't going to work. So mm-hmm. I really had to control myself and really look at the defense and figure something out because it wasn't working. So I really had to change everything. I had to change everything. Obviously, I didn't change what I was doing, but I wasn't catching my passes. I was passing like – I was passing softly because her defense was good against me on the five, and I – I had to pass confidently or else it wasn't going anywhere. I was giving away what I was doing because I was nervous. Yeah. Did you make a, did you make, did you make a zone adjustment to um, address Kathy scoring? So we didn't, me and Midori didn't necessarily say, okay, we're changing this. It was more of me uh, paying more attention to where things were going. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, it's not just Midori's fault we got scored on. She passed through my three bar and my five bar as well. So I had okay. to really pay close attention to what she was doing. So so you, you had like, I don't know, it was 10 minutes. Those are things you're, you're cycling through your brain. And maybe you're not using all those words and you're not using all that language in your brain. But you're telling yourself, these are the things I need to do because I can't continue on this way. I can't mm-hmm. continue... Um, being instinctive. I can't, I gotta, I gotta, so you're, you're um, making a lot of strategic choices, but you're just not using all that language in your brain, right? You're kind of understanding yourself in this moment. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously I don't want to be thinking too much because that also will go badly for me. Yeah. I appreciate coaching and I appreciate all of that, but in the moment I know what I have to do. It, it just really comes down to me. And if I'm willing to tame myself and, and not rush and be and make not the best decisions because a lot of times I know what I need to do. It's just, it's up to me. Am I going to do it? Am I going to calm down and execute? So on the left side of the table, if you're, if you're new to this or um, have not been following, this is the women's doubles final at the hall of fame classic 2023 that just happened in Las Vegas. On the left side of the table is Sullivan Rue, Midori Kimura, multi-time world champion tour champions, and on the right side is Ekaterina Sarvilescu and Lynn Tran. Lynn Tran's playing the forward position and multi-time world champions, um, uh, you know, national champions. These are uh, tons of championships between <laughs> the four competitors here. And it was uh, double elimination. And the team on the left, Sully and Midori, had the advantage and they lost the first match in two games. They're coming back, they're about to start uh, the second match. We're a little, I mean, we're over on time, but I'd love to finish the match. Do you have time for this, Sully? Because we're, we're yeah. going to take, okay, let's let's watch it. I don't want to disappoint people that are, so we, we have a renewed sense of mm-hmm. purpose, right? Just, gosh, pass and score the quick straight there. Why that straight? Why? Is there a reason why? Yeah. Do you uh, not want to say? No, <laughs> okay. But right. like I was saying, you know, I was saying don't rush. But the thing is, there's a difference between rushing and just quick shooting because you know it's right for the moment. So basically, another another thing I have to do is 
contain myself in a way that, yes, I will be able to quick shoot, but I have to choose it in the right moment. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. I mean, there's like, yes, I did. No, why is Midori up there? Uh, I I believe we switched for a defensive reason. For five bar, defensive five bar? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, we didn't, we, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but we don't really end up staying this way, but I think it was a good idea. Some people may say it was too early on to switch like that, but I think it was a good idea because if we think it's going to work, why wait yeah. and do it later? I'll tell so you I why. It's, it's like these ideas are only bad in hindsight when people say you shouldn't have done that. The reality is if you want – the reality is if you don't do it, then you second guess and say, why didn't we do that? So once yeah. it occurs to you, you probably should just do it. So you don't have to wonder about should I have done it or not. Because you, know, yeah. you get scored and you're up two to zero now, right? So it worked for what it's worth for the per- for now it's working. Yeah. Um, Lynn's still getting the ball. Do you notice anything? Well, I guess you're you're defending her now, mm-hmm. right? A little different, a little different look. Yeah. And um, although I didn't block her, you know, a hundred percent, even a few will get you through it. And an important lesson I learned from my parents is that you only need one block to win. Because I'll go back to the match that my parents played against Jackie and Ryan uh, in the final somewhere. I'm not sure. My mom quite literally blocked one the whole time. Ryan just scored. I mean, yeah. lights out. And they won. My parents won. Actually, you know, I don't even know if she blocked one. <laughs> wow. You're taking but, one block away, Sully? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, that's, that's the point. That's my point is that – yeah. If you're staying on top of your game and you get one block, that can change the whole thing. Yeah. And I think that's what happened. And But this, I do want to talk about this moment here because – I'm positive. Leave pause it. Hold on. What well, is, you, well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. 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 But we need to pay attention here because this is okay. when I'm – you know, I, I was up. We were up 2-0. My confidence. I'm feeling good in this moment. And then – uh. Well, let's see Ooh, what happens. crushed the push side, like a dead oh, yeah. bar push side. I wonder if her push side's a little better than her pull side. I haven't really, I don't really examined it. But that was a, I, I actually was... haven't either. Yeah. But some may say, like, maybe I should have prepared and, and watched. But I think it depends. I think sometimes having knowledge from other people of what the person prefers may do you bad, may yeah. give you a disadvantage. I think you need to go in doing your own thing. If it's absolutely not working, then you can uh, do your research. So you said this was a turning point moment. It's two to zero. Oh, you, you get, so is that it? You got a little bold. Did you get the stuff right there? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think, no, something else is going to happen, but I, okay. I don't know if it's in this game. Okay. So yeah, so she, she did a, a quick pull yeah. and I was confident. We were up is the thing. So we were up 2-0. I'm feeling great. Then they come back 2-0. I'm like, great. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, good timeout. That was a great timeout. And she freaking Where's stole the ball? it. It's on her five bar. Okay, so, so she stole then, it. She got that. Yeah. Let's pause this. Let's pause this. Yeah. What's happening? So, What's... so now I'm like, okay, um, you know, calm down a little bit because yeah, uh, uh. we were up. I was feeling, oh, like those first two points, I'm like, all right. I figured it out. Like I got this. Not that I figured them out, but I figured myself out. And yeah, you know, I- I'm feeling good. And then they come back two zero, and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe, uh, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So then I'm starting to feel okay. This might, yeah, this could be bad. This could be bad. And don't let them get the first game. Just don't yeah. do it. Yeah. And then she steals it. And I knew it. I knew I was going to do something stupid on that pass. Why? And Why? You just know? You just felt it? Well, sometimes it's like I have this idea and I just can't stop myself from doing it. Not that I can't stop myself, but like I'll bring it down and I'm going to do the pass. Right? I'm doing it. I'm like, don't do it. It's wrong. And sure enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and then you can imagine I'm not super confident on blocking her five bar at this point yeah. because I haven't had such yeah. a great history of it. Although this is the first time we played, but uh, yeah, this is not this is not yeah. good. So, so I, I think you may see. I don't think that me and Midori switch here, but you may see. see if I'm correct at this point, we may look at each other, and I'm asking, should we switch? 
and I, I don't know. And you're playing, wait, right now, she has the ball in the five bar. You're playing forward. You're asking Midori if you should switch yeah. to be a defensive so, so or a defensive it's, switch. It's either this or the next point. Let's say if I have it on the five and I turn yeah. to her and I say, do we need to switch? Maybe that's so. Okay, you switched. So we, we, we did you're switch. In the back. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I think this is funny. I think this part's funny. Let's see. Okay, let's see. So watch Midori. She, her five bars so good. Watch this, watch, five this, bars. watch this. Okay, so she she gets one right. She gets it back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me let me say something. I thought it was this point, but there was a point where we switched and Midori blocked her lane and swatted it. So we finally get a five ball block. She swats it so hard it flies back and lands on lane three bar. <laughs> oh god, it's all going their way. Yeah. So for, look, you're behind now. Yeah. It's four to three. Yeah. And, and block me once again. Yeah. Oh, and she's like, so... yeah, dude. I really probably shouldn't nice. have time out here. Okay, good. See, that was a confident pass. Yeah. And um, I think at this point, when I had it on the three bar, good luck. I think when I had it on the three bar, I was like, I mean, sorry, on the five, I turned to Midori and say, should we switch? And that is showing a lack of confidence for me. But the fact that Midori says, yeah. no, you got this. That's good. It's great. Look, gosh, see, I'm so torn with that. I'll tell you why. Like, on, yeah. on, uh, um, I'm going to pause it for a second. When yeah. Oftentimes, the rule of thumb is if there's a forward and they ask you to switch, especially if it's to take a shot, it's like, well, yeah, I got yeah. to. You're asking me to do it. Yeah. It's a whole other psychology when the person has it the is. confidence to say, just do it, just go. Yeah. And she fed that to you, which is great. It's reaffirming. Maybe that's exactly what you needed to hear. Yeah, it is. Know? Because a lot of people do say, um, you know, if your partner even has a little bit of doubt, you need to switch. But she knows my uh, capability and that if I set my mind and I'm confident, I can do it. I think Caddy just made a mistake right there where she, I think she tried to um, – I don't know if it was getting away from her or what happened, but I think she just tried to push the ball out a little bit. I, I may have missed it. Yeah. But you picked it up, so it's kind of like a turnover. Yeah. Maybe you, maybe she yeah, was. had a chance to grab it. I but think it now, may have been, but I yeah. it is difficult. Like our table compared to her home table was uh, oh, way yeah. different. They and, definitely, you guys definitely have an advantage because it's um it's your course. table, it's your home table. Yeah. yeah. But so testament to their greatness to be here in the final, man, and to be taking it to you. I mean, they're taking it to you, right? You guys are grabbing oh, your backs absolutely. against the wall. Yeah, for sure. And I wasn't. Uh, I didn't feel like we should win because <laughs> you look at she said yeah she did in the comments <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> again again all right Liz, I look at I haven't seen this match <laughs> so this is really this is new yeah. for me it's oh wait oh wait that's what it was did you see that yes she dropped the that's, pass that's the one no no, no. Midori swatted it and it yeah. flew all the way back to win but you got it now how, yeah I don't know how I ended up, I don't know why I'm in a pool oh, okay. Uh, it's like just but back on Lynn's five bar must yeah. be so stressful. She's so smart. She uses her timeouts. I mean, she's doing all the right things, right? And it's not mindless. Like some people have a mindless timeout. Like I'm just going to take a timeout yeah. because I should. She's very cerebral. So she's like, yep. look, this is a big possession. I need the timeout right here. Yeah. Um, and so um, let's see. Midori's up front. You're in goal. You're in goal for defensive reasons. You're both in defensive positions, right? Yeah. Her five bar defense and your um, three bar defense. So right here, I feel really, really confident in Midori. Um, that was a good pass, but anyway. sweet pass, yeah. Yeah, that was. <laughs> it's hard to find also like where she's passing is another thing because you can know someone's gonna go lane, but where are they going lane? So they won. Ooh. They won the first game. Oh, dang, I didn't know that. Okay, well, wow. Well, this I is, forgot about well, that. Maybe, well, well, maybe you don't know what happens. This is stressful. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Look at yeah, that. So Lynn is a look. I'm a big Lynn Tran fan, right? She's so worked so damn hard in her five bar. I've watched her wreck all those pros and pro singles at the Hall of Fame. She just destroyed them on the five bar. So it's really fun watching her play. But everything's going her way right now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, she's getting the ball almost every time. She's scoring at a high enough percentage. Everything's going. This is a full on freight train going in the wrong direction for you, yep. right? Yeah. So what's um, let me? I'm going to pause just for a second. And in your head, is there anything different happening? Or are you just saying, look, man, just buckle down and let's go? What's yeah, going so on? I kind of laughed in my head because we were up 2-0 and then they come up on a lead and they end up beating us the first game mm -hmm. when we should have fought through and and won yeah. it. 
two yeah. zero is a big lead to blow. And uh, so here, I remember looking around in the crowd, hearing a few people cheering for them, seeing making eye contact with a few people. Again, Christina, she's always been like someone that's very, I don't know, just a great, yeah, you know. So Advocate. you know, yeah. yeah. So she looks at me and she's like, "Come on, like, come on, be be yourself." And and then I see Tony too as well, cheering. For, I hear him, "Come on, Sully." And Tony always helped me out, uh, you know, focusing and and just getting it done, like. I don't know. I, I like to use a lot of his mindsets. And so this game going into it was a little different than the first set when we lost the first game because the first the first set I was just everywhere. And here I'm like I'm still confident. You're I'm still, still confident, confident in myself. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean of course I'm 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 more nervous, obviously. But another thing is that I, I have to remember like me and Midori have, have done really well this tournament. And I'd like to three-peat. I'd like to win it for a third year in a row. Because this is a huge tournament, and we fought a yeah. long way to get here. Well, look, I don't know if you're – I don't know how conscious it is, but you once again, you did the quick pass and the quick straight on the first yeah. possession and scored. So maybe that's kind of a running thing at this point. I don't know how fast so you get I, away with it. See, I finally stole a ball. And yeah. that's so important. I finally got it. And they got it. a break. They got a break, so now you get two. Now we're up 2-0. So now yeah. I'm remembering maybe I did let up the first game because I feel like when you're in the lead, maybe you are unconsciously fighting less hard. And maybe I did that. So now I'm thinking, do not do that. Act like you're down right now. Yeah. Play like you're well, down. you are, basically. And then they got to oh, yes, break back. we are. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This so is this pretty is really important. It's pretty intense. Like, these are Otherwise, critical moments. Most people – you know, most people fold at this point. They're like they're down. Yeah. They they lost three games in a row. Yeah, and yeah. it's two oh. out of three. Oh, right. And it's a shot to your uh, your ego, I guess you could say. Yeah, for sure. So Kathy is still firing away, and she's dangerous back there, right? Yeah, she, and all the she has banks. She can angles, passes. She can Ooh. do everything yeah. back there. And I was nervous every time she had it back there. I'm, I, I get pretty nervous. I'm more confident here in my defense. I'm more aggressive, which, see, it, it's helping me that I'm swatting and I'm being aggressive. But you feel uncomfortable, especially her shot. It's a, it's a pin shot. We don't see that here. Of course, I've yeah. luckily gotten to see some being at World Cup, but you're uncomfortable. And I got another one there. So yeah. it's good that I kept my confidence through the second game because if I was like, whatever, like we've lost three games in a row, it's done with, we would have lost. So they got one, and now it's four to one, right? They yep. got yes, yeah, four to one. Yeah. So in moments like these, where I come up in the second game, because this happens a lot to me, I'll, I'll lose the first game and I'll kind of do really well the second. I just pretend like the third game is a continuation of the second. What I mean, obviously it is, but you know what I mean. Like it's yeah, not. Yeah. It's still the same game. In yeah, you know, it's so, it's so psychological. It's so in between your ears. And I'll, and I'll give you an example. I knew a guy that he could score um he he could always score the first three or four points maybe three points but once he got mm -hmm. three points he had a problem so he just started yeah. telling himself when it was four four that it was three to zero mm -hmm. he started telling yep. him that it was trick his mind like he's his own um, pathological liar mm -hmm. lying himself and he would convince himself he played better at four four because he told himself it was a different score yep you know uh that's a pretty interesting way to deal with it there's plenty of um science about stress anxiety choking under pressure and that all that elevates and ramps during highly stressful situations like mm -hmm. when the scores type so yeah. so this is a, a true back and forth battle with lynn and kathy yeah. um now they're now, now they're um fighting uh with their backs against the walls right because you're about to oof, yeah so and like she's blocked me a few times at this point yeah which I probably, um, not probably, but I should have called a timeout because if I'm getting blocked several times in a row, row I need to get a grip and slow down because I have rushed all three of the opportunities I had. Well, where, where that's worked for you, though, I think in this match where it's worked for you is you could really feel like you're behind when because when, you, you could make people play faster, right? I mean, you've, I've yeah. seen you do it to people so many times. You're playing so fast 
that the person you're playing against feels like they need to play faster. There's really no reason for them to play faster. But if yeah. it's been – and it's over. No, no, it's not over. Is it over? Did they did – This game, game is. This game is over, yeah. How did so that Midori, game end? Midori what came happened? in clutch again, and she scored it out the back. Okay. Which one, what would she do? Did she do her signature push-pull kick, or did she do – No, she did a pull kick. She just she did, did a pull kick. kick. Okay. Signature. Uh, another signature. Yeah. But here we are. We're heading into the last game, this championship game. Yep. Uh, they, they won three straight games. And you won uh, the fourth game, right? Mm-hmm. And so now it's the it's the last game. Um, you're saying that you're feeling confident the entire time. Right now, are you just are you just like? Yeah, I'm just like all right, all right, yeah. Okay. All right, let's finish it. That's what I'm thinking. This, and this, once again, I don't want to sound like cocky or anything, and it, it really has nothing. Oh, you to do sound with like it. hell, Sully. You sound just kidding. Here's me doing okay. See, here's me joking around. That's how you can tell, you know, I'm I'm feeling it because I'm not like trying not to cry, staring. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it doesn't matter who I'm playing. I, I don't want anyone to take offense when I say those kind of things. But it's more of myself getting into it, getting into the groove, and then knowing, like, yeah. all right, we have to do this. You know, there, which had to happen. The top players, the top masters. Have the, I mean, the, especially in the 90s, and your dad knows this because I was playing in the 90s when your dad was playing. They, they knew when someone was in a groove and they had to look for all the tactics to get them out mm-hmm. of a groove. How do you get someone who's in a role off the role? And there's all kinds of gamesmanship, that kind of thing yep. happens. But like like right now, you're in your mode, right? You're feeling, feeling it. And, um, and I get there's another layer of this is how do we get Sully to stop playing well mm-hmm. how would we need to do physically on the table or otherwise um you know sometimes people would and, and they get the first point wow so it's, it always feels like you're behind though besides yep. the one game you wanted you're behind the entire time even when yep. you have a 2-0 lead very quickly you're behind yep okay and i believe i do fall behind again another point in this game if i'm correct because i remember like uh saying to myself after this point saying you know yes we did lose really bad these first three games. I mean, the the first game of this set was 4-4, but still, we lost three in a row. And I'm saying, but we, we overcame it and we won a game. So don't give up now. Like, just because, watch, I think she scores this, actually. Okay, maybe not. But I do believe they come up in a lead again. And that's so unsettling. <laughs> I remember yeah. I had in, in the split second I had, we're, we're losing. And then I had no. Okay, you called timeout. Why? Tell me the timeout right there. Yeah. I Why? mean, she already had an opportunity to score here. If they go up 2-0, it's, it's, not, it's not good. Because, yeah, we went up 2-0, but we weren't as consistent at that moment as they were. Because if they go up 2-0, what are the odds that she's going to get another one? And what are the odds? I'm going to block her five bar and so on. So that was really important. And look, I gave it away. <laughs> So yeah, good time out. Let's Man, see. this if I if I'm watching this live because I haven't seen this match. If I'm watching mm-hmm. this live, really, I feel like Lynn and Kathy are gonna are like. Oh yeah, oh me. yeah. It feels. And there like was they're... a there was a crowd. There was a big crowd. And look, she has it again. Another reason, and I mean another point to what I was saying, like oh, the possessions. Yep, ahead. but the possessions they they matter. She's had what three or four shots to go up to 2 yeah. oh and I think we that they do go up 2-0 but she had all the, the chances too so like she was saying how she worked on her five bar so much but then needed to work on her three yeah. uh still an advantage you still get it you're still getting it more oh man she you I did episode yeah I, I am but, sorry I am blocking yeah. like I've blocked a few but she gets it back anyways continue no, no, oh, this is your show. I want to listen to you sorry. talk, man. Um, I did an episode with her, episode two, and mm-hmm. the stuff that she works on is like hardcore disciplined training. Like she trains on all this minutia, ball catching, and um, like the ball stop passing. Yeah, and, and so these things, like she, she plays at a level of uh, a disciplined consistency where she's gonna her five bar is built in a way she passes in a way she's gonna keep getting possessions she's probably gonna out five most people right so there's, it's, it's, there's a stress there but so it's two is it two to zero right now yeah and, and you just you, went long. i don't nice. know if you saw but uh 
there was, I put my hand on the table. I looked at Midori, and that's when I asked, do we switch? And uh, showing, obviously, my confidence is kind of shaking now. Yeah. And she yeah. said no, and I scored it. That's so now nice. I'm, I'm yeah. back. Now I'm back. Just like that, I, I feel I feel more confident in myself. We got a point, you know. Nice. Okay, finally, get I get a ball. Nice But job, then I'm Midori. thinking, don't waste it, all. Okay. Shot the straight. You're not shooting a ton of middles. Is there? Is it not there? Or is it the way the defense yeah, looks? I think I, maybe I, ooh, that was a good shot. I think maybe I get stubborn sometimes. Maybe it was there. I honestly don't remember. I remember seeing what I saw and thinking that's what well, I'm going you got, for. You got a block. Yeah. You got a block on her. Another reason why being aggressive defensively matters. Yeah. Because I could have just blocked it and had it and maybe got blocked on the five bar, but, you know, swap back and. Maybe you'll get lucky. Okay, see now I, I'm more in the flow. I think my passing. Yeah. You can tell when it. You can tell when I feel more confident in it because I'll do more of my my pickup passing and my quick stuff. Time out. So that this is really really good. I think uh, I wonder. Kathy scored so well the first match, and I don't know if your defense adjusted or you, you said it did maybe intuitively it adjusted, but Kathy, Kathy could have got away with passes. I think because you guys were so uh, pensive with her scoring on you, she could have got away with like option brush lane passes to Lynn or, or um, passes to Lynn's five bar. Even I don't know how well that works out of the pin position, but um, you know, she paid, she paid for that one because uh, maybe because she scored so well the first match that she needed to um, look for clears this match and not, and it doesn't all lean on that, but I'm just saying. Oh, and then and then Lynn scored from the five bar. Is it three to two right now? Is that what's happening? No, it's it's three three. So it's it was we were down two zero. Then we actually scored three in a row, which was oh. a big deal. Yeah. So now this is the most important point. Boom. Yeah, that was good. I and I, I don't think you went long there. I think she was on one. No. You, you get yeah, shorter. It was, yeah, yeah, it was a little three quarter maybe. So now. Again, I'm not. I'm not feeling like, oh, we got oh. this. I'm feeling like, don't you let it go overtime. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because then it's it's just different. It's she it's just missed different. that pass. By the way, she went and brushed down. And it was yep, open. I know. Bounced. She just missed it. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question: mm -hmm. If this was Leonhart or Bonzini, mm -hmm. do you think you'd um? Do you think the outcome? I mean, it's tornado at your home table. Do you give the advantage to? Oh, there it is. Congratulations. Yep. And I cried after this because Jesus uh, was that emotional and having your confidence stripped from you, which it's not, I don't know. I guess I'm not used to that as much yeah. as I realized. But luckily I did have that world's experience of being destroyed the first set and, and overcoming it. Which was important. Like I said, we were down 2-0 in the third game. It's not looking good at all. Yeah. But you you can't – you really can't give up, which obviously that's kind of cheesy, but it's so true. Because, you know, maybe I wasn't doing the best offensive, like on the five bar with the opportunities I had, but I stayed aggressive. I, I didn't give up and just playing around. Yeah. Like I stayed aggressive and I got a point. I, I, I stuffed one back in. I got a point because I was still fighting. Yeah, well, that's why you're the every, wolf. <laughs> That's you're, the, you're the wolf because let me tell you you're the wolf because you're up on the table you're a ravenous predator on the foosball table but i think you had won this tournament twice in a row you said this was your third opportunity to win it again right you to win three this is your opportunity with three times so you're like a, a wolf with the bone you're not going to give your bone up so you're you were you were um determined to win that match uh look man i think thank you for it's been incredible having you on uh, we're way over on time, and I respectfully I told you 45 minutes. We're at an hour and 20 minutes. Um, but uh, I think there's so much to learn from you and listening to you, like all the character building and resilience, and you're at the very start of your foosball journey. I mean, I don't know. Am I assuming that? Do you want to, do you want to play more foosball? I mean, you like – Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, you're going, I, yeah. you're going to Germany? You're going to Germany yeah. to play Bonzini? They, they might – um, go to Rome. Why don't we do this? Why don't we? What? Well, that's the wrong. What is this? Yeah, I don't know. What is that? <laughs> I pressed the wrong one. All right, let's 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 close out on this. Why don't we go speak once again about what what this is? 
um, who, who we're here driving visibility for and what we're supporting. Yeah, so once again, this is my cousin Bennett with mm-hmm. a very rare un- uncurable disease called INAD. Um, and so basically sending money, raising money, it's going to go to the overall INAD Foundation Fund, not just to Bennett. And we're trying to raise a million dollars by the end of July for a clinical uh, trial. Trying anything to find a cure, find something to help uh, for these babies because the lifespan is around five to 10 years old, which is very heartbreaking. But yeah, uh, yeah we're trying, we're trying our best. So a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, forego and- that cup of coffee at Starbucks and and uh, take a, take a look at that link and uh, and and um, or at least become educated like I did on uh, on this disease state and mm-hmm. uh, and this young man who's your cousin Bennett. Um, Sully, is there anything else you want to say before we kind of sign off here on our live Twitch stream? Um, uh, let's see. I guess I can. I see one of these comments, and I don't understand oh, what, what it says. See, but I don't want to be. I don't want to be misunderstood if this is what's being asked. Okay, are you putting the ball on the wrong spot after you scored as part of gamesmanship? Um, I think maybe I don't know what where I put it, but maybe Lynn had to go and adjust it for herself. It, you know what I'm trying to say? If that makes sense. Are you putting like, the ball? On I the scored wrong the spot? ball, and then I put it on the five bar. I put it on Lynn's five bar and maybe Lynn likes it in a particular spot and she had to grab and fix it. Um, but no, I would never do that. I don't don't think you even think that way. No, I don't know. I I don't know because a lot of people will get the wrong idea of me. Yeah. Yeah. At least maybe not here, but elsewhere. And a snot at all like me at all. I, I don't do, you know, we were talking about gamesmanship and maybe things outside of the table to throw their other opponent's game off but i do nothing of that like if i yell or i cheer it's nothing towards my opponent and it's not to throw them off of their game or intimidate it's just because i'm excited it's nothing i do is strategy to throw my opponent off yeah i look i when i hand someone the ball it's not my responsibility to put the ball precisely where they like to start from so yeah. I don't know. It's, what are you going to do? They got they got to adjust the ball no matter what. Yeah, if and even, I can hand it. Some people like to be handed the ball. Yeah, and some and, people hate that. By the way, some people hate being handed the ball. Like uh, J- I, you never played against Jeep. I don't know if you ever played against Jeep. No, Jeep but wanted I, the ball on the table. If you put the ball in his hand, you get pissed off. Yeah, my dad gave ball. me some stories. My dad yeah, he's, yeah. There's all kinds of gamesmanship, and I hear you saying. You didn't participate or partake in it. I'm all over the place. I think it's fun in certain situations, but to, yeah. each, to each their own, right? To each their own. Yeah. Like, uh, um, let's see. Anon- anonymously, good night. See you in two weeks. Mm-hmm. So we more memorable matches. Oh, gosh. There's Absolutely. no end to memorable matches you guys will have against each other. No, never, never. We're always so. in the plant. <laughs> so, um, Sully, thank you. Uh, bef- not anytime soon because respectful of your time and your. But sooner than later, I'm going to want to do this again. I'm going to do it with your dad. Yeah. Your dad has like oh, two yeah. or three matches he wants to do. Uh, he's thinking Great. about two or three matches. So Terry and I are going to get on here and do this. But um, I guess, you know, uh, thank you for coming on. And uh, we'll see you. I'll, I'll see you like Friday. You're going yeah. to Texas Day, right? Yes. Very yeah. Excited. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. And so, um, hey, everybody, thank you for showing up on, on this episode, episode three. Sullivan is the wolf. That's her new <laughs> nickname. And I'm not letting it go away. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. See ya.